Okay, we're going to talk about myotomes and peripheral nerves and answer the question, what motor deficits occur when you injure a root of the brachial plexus in contrast to injuring a peripheral nerve? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So to, as we go through this tutorial, the uh, basic understanding of the brachial plexus would be necessary, and you might not have to label everything like this, but you should have an understanding, and if you uh, need some help, just look at the link below to take you to a tutorial on the overview of the brachial plexus. Now, a myotome is, a myotomes are muscles supplied by motor neurons from a single spinal root level. And so here are the C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1 levels, and the actions associated with those myotomes. And so uh, I'm going to ask a question. What peripheral nerves transport now the motor neurons from the spinal cord level to the various muscle groups? And so there we have it. We call it the brachial plexus. And so here's the C5 myotome, which is shoulder abduction, primarily the deltoid. And that shoulder abduction looks like this, from this position to this position. And the axillary nerve is what innervates the deltoid muscle that results in shoulder abduction. So the axillary nerve is what's transporting motor neurons from the C5 spinal cord level to the deltoid. How about the C6 myotome with elbow flexion of the biceps? Well, that is what elbow flexion looks like, and the biceps muscles innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. So, musculocutaneous nerve takes motor neurons from the ventral horn cells of the C6 spinal cord level and is transporting those motor neurons to the biceps. How about C7 myotome? Well, that's elbow extension, and that's the triceps, and it looks like this from this position to this position. And the radial nerve, it's what's transporting C7 motor neurons. What about C8 with wrist flexion? Well, that's what wrist and finger flexion look like from here to here. And the median and ulnar nerves are what are transporting motor neurons to the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus muscles. What about T1? Well, finger abduction looks like that from here to there, and the dorsal interossei I do that, and the ulnar nerve is what's transporting those motor neurons. So let's do a practice question. So what spinal cord level is primarily responsible for this action? And then there's our associated segmental spinal cord levels. Well, that's wrist flexion, which means the C8 spinal cord level is responsible for it. So there are the wrist flexors, flexor carpi radialis, flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor digitorum profundus, half of it, flexor digitorum profundus, the other half of it, and flexor carpi ulnaris. So the wrist flexor muscles are innervated by motor neurons. These muscles are innervated by motor neurons that arise from the C8 spinal cord level, shing, like that. So what peripheral nerves transport the motor neurons from the C8 spinal cord level to these various wrist flexor muscles. So there's the brachial plexus. So what are those two nerves? It's the median and ulnar nerve that are doing it. All right. So the wrist flexor muscles are innervated by motor neurons that arise from the C8 spinal cord level and are transported by way of the median and ulnar nerves. So peripheral nerves are muscles that are supplied by motor neurons from a single peripheral nerve. Now, these peripheral nerves may contain more than one spinal cord level. Let's do a practice question. If the following neurons, those ones, were injured, what would most likely occur? All wrist flexion would be affected, no change in wrist flexion, some wrist flexion would be affected. So pause and think about it for a second, and I'm going to continue. If you just knock out the ulnar nerve, some wrist flexion would be affected because the flexor carpi radialis, superficialis, flexor digitorum superficialis, and half of the FDP would be okay because the median nerve is unaffected. Only the ulnar contribution to wrist flexion would be affected. How about this one? If the following neurons there were injured, what would most likely happen? Uh, pause, look at the choices, and think about it. I'm now continuing. The answer to this one is that all wrist flexion would be affected. The reason being, look at you've knocked out all motor neurons coming from C8, so all of those motor neurons going in the median and ulnar nerves would be affected. So let's look at this picture, these pictures. What spinal cord level is primarily responsible for these images? Well, there's elbow flexion and sensation of the thumb and the brachioradialis reflex. Well, the answer is the C6 neurological level. And so there are all those neurons associated connecting back and forth, either sensory to or motor from uh, the tissues and spinal cord. So what nerves are now 
peripheral branches of the brachial plexus are transporting these. Well, I mean, let's take a look at that. The one up there for flexion of the elbow, that's musculocutaneous nerve. Sensation of the thumb, that's median nerve. And brachial radialis reflex, both motor and sensory, that's the radial nerve. If the following was injured right there, what would most likely happen? Pause and read through those choices and think of the answer. I'm going to continue. The answer to this is C. You would lose sensation only in the median nerve sensory field for the thumb that's right there. Why? Well, musculocutaneous nerve is unaffected because elbow flexion is still able to go because the musculocutaneous nerve is okay and brachial radialis reflex is okay because the radial nerve is not affected. How about if the fallen injury was here? What would happen? Pause and think through this as you look through the choices. I'm going to continue. The answer is loss of the brachial radialis reflex. And why only that? Well, the musculocutaneous and median nerves are unaffected. So elbow flexion and sensation of the thumb would be okay. How about if the fallen injury, if the injury was there, what would most likely occur? Pause and read through the choices and think about it. I'm going forward. The answer is Basically, you're knocking out the entire C6 neurological level. Look at that. You knock out the ventral ramus and C6. You cannot get motor neurons to the musculocutaneous nerve or through the radial nerve. And you cannot get sensory neurons from proprioceptors in the brachioradialis muscle or sensory neurons from the median nerve of the thumb. Now, you'll notice then, so that's why I highlighted and underlined A, but then B, D, and E would be affected. But I said loose sensation in the median nerve sensory field. Why didn't I include that? Well, we would knock out from the C6 level, but remember, the median nerve also does your swear finger, which is the C7 dermatome, so you would still be able to get sensory neurons there. Okay, so now... What about let's do some tracing, trace sensory motor neurons in the median nerve. So there's our median nerve in the cutaneous field and on the brachial plexus. So let's follow sensory neurons from the thumb, go to the C6 level. How about the middle finger, the swear finger to C7? How about to the C8 spinal cord level? There's our motor neurons going to the wrist flexors. And how about T1 going to our intrinsic hand muscles in the, the median nerve case, basically our thenar muscles. You'll notice then that the median nerve has four different segments of the spinal cord associated with it. But the C6 and C7 are primarily sensory, and the C8 and T1 are primarily motor. How about the ulnar nerve? Well, there's our ulnar nerve uh, cutaneous field, and we follow the sensation all the way back to the C8 dermatome level. And let's take a look now at the C8 myotome level. That goes to wrist flexors. And then the T1 goes to intrinsic hand muscles, primarily everything, uh, uh, hypothenar, lumbricals, and so forth. So myotomes, if you injure a root or a trunk, you're going to lose strength in its associated myotome. If you injure a peripheral nerve, you're going to lose strength in all the associated muscles. And that, my friends, is the myotome and peripheral nerves in a nutshell.